Yeah. Well, honey, let me tell you about Sean Foyt. He's from Redding, California. He goes and holds praise and worship gatherings, which turn into revival rallies. Yes. Recently, he did a big one in Washington, D.C. Tens of thousands of people were there. Yeah. Daystar was blessed to get to broadcast that live. And he's got another big one coming up in one of our favorite cities, Miami, yeah. Florida. New yeah. Year, Year's Eve, Miami, Florida. He'll tell you more about it. So please join Joni and me as we welcome back Sean Foyt. Come in. Hey. How are you? Okay, now, one of the best things you ever did was marry Kate. So we <laughs> know true. that. That's true. And you and Kate got together and fulfilled the scripture to be fruitful and, and multiply. multiply. Yes. So you got four amazing kids. Right. I love all of their names. And Sean, if you will, tell us their names and what their names mean. Well, our firstborn, Katura. Her name's Keturah Liv, and that word is a Hebrew word that means the fragrance of life. Oh, Ooh. wow. And uh, so, I, and I was actually preaching out of the verse that says you are a fragrance of life, you know, in, uh, in the New Testament, and that's kind of where that came from. So, Keturah Liv, uh, she's 11, Malachi Christopher, he's 9, of course, you know Malachi means messenger. Yeah. Uh, Ezra Justice is 7. And Zion David is three. So we got the whole Old Testament covered. Yeah, I believe you do. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. And so was the last one a surprise or did you plan all of those? You know, the last one, we, it, the last one was he's wild. And we had, <laughs> uh, we had a miscarriage and kind of went through a difficult season. And, and then came Zion. And yeah. my wife thought he was a girl the whole time and I knew it was a boy and we made a little bet on it and out came time. Oh, and... so you won. <laughs> I, I won't ask what the bet was. That's none of my business. That's like duck duck go commercial. <laughs> none of their business. So we won't we won't reveal that. But uh Joni? Well you know, um well first off we're so proud of you for thank you taking the stand that you've Absolutely. taken. And we are like minded and uh we really believe in what you're doing and you have shown support for what we're doing. Yeah. But there's a whole body of Christ that is not even awake as to what's really happening mm -hmm. in the world today. Yeah. But at the same time, as we see darkness coming upon us, there's also a great light yeah. of revival. And mm -hmm. you have experienced that. Tell us kind of what's going on. Bring us up to date with Sean. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Isaiah 60 is a, is a good verse. You know, it talks about... Um, you know, darkness covers the earth, darkness is over the people, but the glory of the Lord rises on you. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we've been to 138 cities across America. Wow. 138. Yeah. And I don't know if anyone's been to more. I mean, it, we've seen everything that there is to see. We've been to all the difficult places, probably the top 50 most populated cities in America. We've been there. And Including like Los Angeles. Los Angeles, Seattle, Portland, Chicago, New York, Boston. Um, you know, and, and we've really targeted places of devastation. I, I love the, the promise, you know, that we were called to rebuild ruined cities, restore places long devastated. Yeah. And so we've taken that, that mandate as, as a calling to, to rebuild the kingdom. So we've gone to all those cities and there's not been one place that we have gone where we haven't seen the presence of God break out. We haven't seen salvation, signs and wonders, miracles, deliverance. I mean, America is hungry right now. Okay, now, but it has not been without opposition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Christians need to realize, because I think sometimes and us preachers are guilty of making you think, well, once you become a Christian, you'll never have another problem. But the good news is that with the problems, God brings solutions. Mm. So maybe, Sean, whatever you feel comfortable sharing a couple of encounters that could have gone wrong, and threats. but with the yeah. Lord's help, they went right. Well, I mean, I think when, when, you've, when you've been to, you know, 138 cities, when you've seen every card the enemy has dealt, you know, we've been in the middle of Antifa and crazy, uh, you know, protesters. We've had Satanists throw blood on us. We've oh had, my good. Uh, I mean, of course, then we have tyrannical governors and mayors and they try to do, done contract tracing. And, and then, you know, the press and every liberal media article has, has written slanderous stuff about us. But here's the thing. 
in the midst of all that, the places that we find the greatest resistance are the places where we find the greatest breakthrough. Like, for example, we were in uh, Chicago, and um, we were there. Uh, we had about almost 5,000 people on the corner of Heroin Highway. They call it Heroin Highway right there by the United Center. And, uh, you know, right next to Garfield neighborhood, one of the worst crime places in America. And that night we went after full blown deliverance, right, of, of this demonic spirit of murder, this, you know, freedom from oppression and drugs. We had drug dealers running off the streets into our meeting, down to the altar, throwing wow. fanny packs of meth, crystal meth, you know, pills, um, all kind of cra- needles, all kind of crazy drugs, and getting delivered and saved. And so, amazing. You know, the dark God shines the brightest light in the darkest places. Okay, so when that happens, how does that impact you as far as your heart, your feeling, your thoughts? Well, I just feel like for me, it shows me that God's writing a different story. Like he, he's writing a narrative that's different than the mainstream media. He's writing a narrative that, that, man, if we press in to his presence, if we go after the things of the kingdom, he will, he will show us what's really happening. I believe we're in full-blown revival. You know, Sean, when I think about that, a lot of those people wouldn't go inside of a church because they don't understand church or they've been hurt by Christians or they would feel under conviction. So you take the church to them. You take the good news to them. Church has left the building. Yeah, so in an open door, outdoor meeting like that, it's a whole lot easier for them to see and hear and then get touched by God and respond. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a big part of it. We, we feel like that the enemy overplayed his hand. And when all these restrictions came down and all these churches shut down, you know, it was like, well, do we need, you know, I, I led worship at a mega church. Do I need my mega church in order to worship God and to see his kingdom come? No, I can go out on the beach. I can go to the streets. I can go under a bridge. You know, I, he'll show up anywhere, you know, he'll, as long as we're faithful. And so that's what we started to see as a movement, especially in California, where we, it was the most restrictive of people just saying, you know what? We don't need the buildings. We don't need our cushy, you know, sanctuaries. We can find God in the middle of the street. I love that. I think we have a clip where actually a woman is bringing her drugs uh, down to the front. So let's watch this together and we'll let Sean comment. That's so amazing. And, you know, as I was watching that, I was just thinking about the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. That 
even those of you that are there right now and you're watching, you're like, I want to experience the presence of God like that. I'm telling you that right where you're sitting, you can surrender That's right. your heart and your life to God and he'll enter that room right where you are. And you can do the very same thing that you saw just a moment ago. God can set you free today. You know, I think that's hard for the world to understand how powerful the Holy Spirit is in delivering people and setting people free. I know you never get tired of it. Some people say, oh, well, they did that and then they can go buy more. But there's really something that happens to these individuals, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 powerful. I mean, it, you know, when you, and, and the key is, is when, when we're worshiping, like there's a grace. When the presence of God comes Hallelujah. in that place of worship, it's not hard, you know? I mean, I call it a shame-free zone. Like all the shame lifts, right? Yeah. And yeah. so people that are just, and they're encountering the beauty of Jesus and they're like, this is what I want. I'm going to get rid of anything I have to that gets in the way. Yeah. And freely they come, yeah. you know? We maybe mention it one time and people just... So it is really living water. Yeah. It's like that water when, with the woman at the well. Jesus said, you'll drink this water and you'll never thirst again. Never thirst. It's, it's different. It's life changing. What, I know Mark is going to ask you about Washington. Before he does that, what's one story that stands out above all the stories? I know there are hundreds, but one that you'll just never forget something that God did in one of these crusades. Well, I'll never, I think we were in North Georgia somewhere and it was, it was kind of like a Tuesday night. It wasn't even a weekend and I was, we were setting up and I was tired. We had done like four cities in a row and kind of missed my family. I was thinking, what are we doing here? This is a small town. I don't know if anyone's going to come. Yeah, I always think those things, just being vulnerable. And we're setting up the stage and, you know, we're doing rehearsal and sound check and there's a, a car over in the other side of the parking lot and and all of a sudden, one of my team members is running over with a guy out of the car. And evidently, there was a guy sitting in his car about and had had a, had a pistol and was about to blow his head off. Oh my goodness! And he heard the rehearsal. I mean, the words of just the rehearsal begin, and the the presence of God came over him. And he put down his gun, and our team got him out of the car. He came down. He gave his life to Jesus. He got free. That night he got baptized, set free, and he's still plugged into local church. Today. Wow, that's amazing. There's hope for you. If you have a need in your life, anything like what's been described today, call that number or go online and we're going to pray for you. And Sean will pray for you at the end of this program. Well, Sean, you were in a pivotal place at a pivotal time, our nation's capital. Tell it. We've got video, video footage. Let's show that and just talk over it and tell us why you went there and what happened. Well, this was a God setup, you know. Um, you, you just can't make this stuff up. You know, getting a permit for the National Mall on September 11th, the 20-year anniversary of 9/11, um, getting the opportunity to worship and 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 God in that place at that time, you know, and and especially post you know, the fall of Kabul in Afghanistan. It made it even more, uh, it, it, it made it even more special for us to get to see, okay, God, how are you going to redeem this? Like, yes. how are you, how are you working in the midst of this pain? And so it was a powerful day. You know, we, we planted a, a, a American flag on every single uh, grave in Arlington that had lost their life in the war on terror. Wow. Uh, we had, of course, a, a special address by uh, President Trump. We had senators there. We had, uh, you know, we, we filled the, the Supreme Court steps with worship. We went to the White House and worship. We went to the Lincoln Memorial and worship. We just took over the city. It was powerful. And I love it that whether you agree or not ag agree, that you prayed for our current president. We did. Yeah, we pray for him. Actually, my daughter, uh, she, she had the most powerful prayer in front of the White House. I've ever, I mean, I, I would just like, it was powerful. She was there early that morning, and I just said, Katura, I, I just want you to pray. And there's something about a childlike prayer, you know? Yes. She just released this powerful prayer about God turning the lights on, and that everybody that was scared in the White House, God was going to turn the lights on. It was just like, it was so encouraging to me. Yeah, we are to pray for all of our leaders, whether we voted for them or not, because God loves them. God can use them in spite of what you might think. He really can, and he can speak to anybody. So what about Miami? What's going to be happening on New Year's Eve? 
Well, Miami is a place uh, that we feel like God is calling us to on New Year's Eve. You know, we love to pick the difficult places. You know, we love to pick the places that people think are impossible. There's a lot of easier places to go in Florida. You know, we love Florida, but God has called us. Some people call it the head of the serpent, you know, the, the center of it all. So we are bringing teams of evangelists, mission teams into South Beach. We're going to be evangelizing, be blasting people with the love of God. Fantastic. And then we're going to end that night with a big worship service. Me and Kim Walker are going to be leading and we'll have probably some other leaders there as well. All right, we've got a video that tells you more about it. Let's watch it together.